Sabbath. I just want to welcome everyone to church today. And this may not be normal church because you may be sitting there at home still in your pajamas. That's okay. We're not here to judge. We're just here to welcome you to what is going to be our new version of church for a little while. Um, so our first element of church is going to be a little unique and different. We'll call this our unique Sabbath school class. How's that? So what we've got, and I've got a group of, I can't really call them guests because they're really just your church family. Um, you know, we've got a group of people here today that we're going to kind of have a little bit of just kind of a panel discussion, kind of a free flowing and, and, and just kind of be able to talk about some of the challenges that are quite unique that we're kind of dealing with today and with all of this junk going on. So I just want to start off by thanking Kat and Valerie and Nick and this other girl sitting next to me. Did you look at my name? No. Bethany Edmondson, alias Coach. Alias, what all else can we call, call you? the happiest girl on the stage. That is what we're really here for. I just want to welcome everybody and just kind of, let's just kind of start off by talking about what in your life has kind of changed over this last few weeks and kind of how does your life feel and look a little different with everything that's kind of started and going on. Remember that free-flowing thing that we're just right. all going to talk up? Yeah, well, that's so what we're going to do. Those of you that don't know, I'm a licensed mental health counselor. And so for me, life has really amped up. Uh, the number of patients that I work with um, has increased. I just did an intake today of a brand new client coming in for services and in need of help. And I've had families coming in in need of help. And really, my life's been pretty busy. I guess for me, uh, it's been it's been a change because uh, as a pastor coming out of school, the first thing that you're told to look at is how can you serve people, and a lot of that is very physical. You go, you know, you're going to places and you're going to meetings, and I've been at the school most of the time, and with no school during the week, it's been it's been a bit of a change. Uh, I'm not sure. Part of me feels like I'm on vacation, but at the same time. I'm not somewhere new, and I'm, it's, it's been a really weird space to be in where I have a lot of time, so I've been doing a lot of reading and trying to connect with God, a lot of personal devotion time. But um, other than that, it's, we're really in a new space. Yeah, very new space for us as well. Um, you know, when they first said that it was going to be two wee, or yeah, I thought it was just going to be two weeks off. I thought, oh, okay, no big deal. We can do that. I do just a few extra assignments, and we'll do some some of our learning fair projects at home. And um, and then when I found out it was going to be six weeks with the potential of more, I I my mind shifted. And the teachers, we all had to kick it into gear and really learn and figure out how can we really serve these kids, make sure they're getting a quality education at home in a completely different way than we're used to teaching. And um, I know that all the teachers at Journey, we have been working way more than, than before. So what I thought was going to be kind of relaxed and easier it turned into a lot more work, but um, very worth it. It was so incredibly um, beautiful to see all the families come and pick up their learning bundles on Wednesday and just to see the kids smiling and playing and keeping our distance, but, um, but yeah, that was, life has turned upside down, and they've already gotten started learning, which has been a lot of fun. Dan might share a little bit about that later, but um, pray for us, because it's definitely a, a big learning curve for everybody involved. Yeah, I was sharing with Bethany that I, taking my shower, getting all ready, ready to head into the office to, um, help take care of some patients and, and I was just telling them that you know my job is basically putting my hands on people all day long so this whole social distancing thing I, I kind of forget when I get away from the office because it's still what I need to do to take care of people so 
But my, uh, but I came out in the morning. It was still a little darkish outside. And here's um, my two girls sitting at the at the kitchen table, working on their spelling books because, um, and and I'm sitting there thinking, girls, you can at least turn the light on. But you know, they were already ready to go, and so hopefully we can keep them that motivated over the next time period. I doubt it, but at least we've got a good start. So, um, yeah. Kat, how about you? Well, that um, more than six weeks concerns me a little. That you said more. Bethany, I'm just oh, saying. Oh, sorry. <laughs> both of my kids are at home, and uh, I am trying to think of it positively, though. Like we're trying to learn new things. Like we're going to learn to bake bread, which I've never done before, and I'm going to teach Alyssa how to sew and learning some life skills that we don't really have time for throughout a normal week. Um, so I'm home a lot right now because I'm not working a lot because my school is closed now. And so it's, it's definitely a lot different um, to be home all the time with my kids, but it's exciting kind of in a way, in a weird way, getting a lot of projects done around the house that need to get done that I haven't had time for. So, so yeah, we were kind of joking with Kat and told her that really the only reason we came out here was an intervention to get away from the house um, and get away from her kids before she did any damage to them. So there's that part too. Um, I think we probably could not find a more and better excuse to celebrate Mother's Day as it's coming up with so many of the moms and then Father's Day with so many of the dads sitting home helping parent and educate and doing all of these things at the same time and um, God, God, does, God does love us because he's given us some sunshine at least these last few days to, mm -hmm. to really allow some of these kids to get out and about and everything too. So a, as we kind of are really dealing with this stuff and, and, and I know s some of you at home when you sit there and look at all this media things and you're looking at all the things going on, there's just so much fear that's really placed out there. And there's so much fear of what's happening. Am I safe? Am my friends safe? Are my, are my relatives safe? Are my parents safe? Are, and, you know, is everybody in society going to begin to go a little bit nutsos? And are we safe among the people we live around? And so looking at that, what ideas do you guys have that we can talk to the rest of our church family about on how to kind of deal with some of those fears or anxieties and things that may be rolling around in our heads. To me, the number one thing is get off of Facebook and social media because it is fully, it fills your head with a bunch of the negative and the fear. And um, I have a friend who was getting pretty stressed out but they were also checking the news and the Facebook constantly. And you don't need all of that stuff, really. You can go to CDC, Public Health, um, Department of Health, and those things will tell you the important information that you need to know without hyping everything up. Yeah. I know for me, um, the clients that have been coming in to see me and discussing their anxiety, I've been actually looking in Pinterest because there's some very nice activities. So this would be even good for maybe you to do with your kiddos at home. And there's a coping toolbox. So if you get on Pinterest, there's a really lovely coping skills toolbox that I've been helping my families that have been coming in, telling them how they could create their own toolbox with their kiddos that are feeling anxious because the kids are also asking their parents a lot of questions and then the parents are like, what should I say to my kids? What should I not say? And so we've been talking a little bit about how they could make that a home activity and enjoy with their kids, putting crayons and um, coloring books and stress balls, bubbles if you have that, um, Play-Doh if you have it, a little journal, notebook, paper, writing down things, being able to draw, do that and create your own coping skills toolbox. So talk to them about that um, as parents. And then there's lovely things about just stress management that's available to look at for 101 stress relievers. And you can look these things up in Pinterest, and it's very positive. 
and it gets your kids focused on something positive, it gets you focused on something positive, and it's productive because you can learn through this and you can just have fun together as a family. So I've been talking to a lot of the parents and families that are coming into my office and giving them some of those types of suggestions of things just that they can do with their kids in the home that can be fun. And um, even creating homemade Play-Doh because you were talking, I loved how you said you were going to maybe learn how to teach them how to make bread. Well, there's homemade Play-Doh that you can make. And I did that with my kids when they were little. And it was like a fun activity to do in the kitchen where you're measuring, you're learning math skills with that, and then you're working together in the kitchen. And so homemade Play-Doh is, is another one that you could do with your kiddos. Um, and it's usually most of the things you already have in your house, in your kitchen. So if you look it up, um, you, could, you could do that with your kids and make some homemade Play-Doh. And that's something that you could add to your coping skills toolbox. So I've been talking to a lot of the families that I work with about things of that nature. And then for the families that actually believe in God um, and want to bring that up, I've been talking to them about now you have time to have family devotions. Mm -hmm. You actually have time to you know, get into your Bible, read your Bible with your kids, have your kids read a scripture text, and then talk a little bit about that. And you can actually have that quality family time that you don't always have time for. And being able to have like some actual good devotional time and sending up prayer and just asking for God to help your family, help the world, and pray for the country and the leaders of our country. Pray for the medical providers of our country, the teachers that are having to figure out online programs, and just really just pray in general. And that that's like a really awesome opportunity as a family because you're then role modeling for your kids. Hey, we can trust in God, and we can pray, and we can pray together, and we can leave those stresses and those anxieties in God's hands, and he is going to help us through these storms and the trials that we have. I actually like just read a devotion because um, I was feeling really anxious and kind of fearful, and I really liked it said to fear God instead, and then you have nothing else. Your fears are going to go away because if you have more fear of him, then you don't have to worry about whatever else is going on in the world. And I thought that was super important. And like you said, like it's been nice to be able to have that family time at night to really just like have devotion and actually have more than just a quick, okay, let's go to bed now. Right. Get to it, you know, and yeah. it's really nice. Mm -hmm. and I just love that aspect of it, that the families are getting connect to connect as families mm -hmm. and that they can cook in the kitchen together. They can sit around the table together. They can actually talk about things. Mm -hmm. at, like you said, getting off social media face-to-face -face discussions, you know? And so to me, it's there's some really exciting positive things about this. You actually get quality time with your family, mm -hmm. which is super important. Something I've really appreciated about all of this is uh, actually this morning I had a pretty long discussion with my dad. Um, I talk with my parents often. I'm the only child, obviously. So um, but getting to talk with my parents and have... You know, so a lot of time, my dad and I had kind of an impromptu Bible study. We just sort of rolled through a bunch of scriptures and talked about how we interact with, with COVID and what's God talking about fear and what are some of the reassurances. And um, One of the things that came up over and over is, number one, God's a defender and God's a protector. Um, we were looking at uh, Genesis 1, actually, looking through that first chapter and looking for some of the characteristics of God that we can find in this chapter, and number one, of course, is God's creator. It's like the first thing that pops out. He creates the heaven and the earth. Boom. Um, but later on in, in verse 3 there, it talks about like the spirit of God hovering over the face of the deep. And one of the things that that, that word in English, hover, to us sounds like a UFO, kind of like hovering over like a cornfield or something. But the imagery that that would actually be evoking is something like uh, a mother eagle um, protecting her nest. Um, and so even before God says, let there be light, he is protective of this planet. He's interested in what's going on here, and that hasn't changed. And that's incredible to think about that from even before Adam, um, we have a God that is concerned about what's going on here. And he, I imagine that he's concerned more than ever now um, as we deal with what's going on. So as we, I'm going to, as we think about the, the social media thing, we've got to make one big exception. And that is that I think we've got to make sure, and um, Rick and I are going to have to figure out for sure how to do this, but 
I, I think everybody needs to be taking some pictures and connecting it to the church's uh, Facebook page on how they're how they're watching church. And you know, if it's in your jammies, it's okay. Um, as long as they're flannel and completely, you know, kosher. Um, but um, you know, we do need to find ways socially to really integrate with each other, not with the stuff that's going to make you extra paranoid, but with the stuff to provide positiveness and provide hope. In, in Valerie, I really learned something. I thought Pinterest was just for people to figure out how to decorate things. Um, <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't help. know. So yeah. that and, um, and for my children at home, that making Play-Doh, that's only when mom and dad are there. Um, <laughs> There was an episode with slime that, we, we, sorry girls, we won't talk about it, um, that, that we will, um, yeah, not discuss. Okay, so as, as we look at this, okay, um, you know, here's one of the things that has been kind of a topic, and we talk about the signs of, of, you know, when it talks about the end coming. And, and so, you know, I've had a lot of people kind of talking and asking, saying, is this it? Is this the end? Is this what it looks like? What do you guys think? That's a really tough question. Um, because we've had that discussion um, in my household a little bit um, between people called my mom and was talking to my mom on the phone actually right before I came here I had a phone call with my mom I'm talking about that and it's super difficult um, I certainly don't know the beginning from the end um, but what I do know is that it's very important that we think in terms of having that connection with God and regardless of whether this is the end or not we need to have that connection with God. And I think that it's our responsibility to share that, share that with our families, share that with our neighbors, share that with friends that we know, um, because we don't know the beginning from the end like God does. But we do know that to have Christ as our Savior and to accept him and what he did in dying on the cross for us, that we have freedom. And there's so much freedom in that knowledge that if we have given our heart to God and just said, okay, Lord, take, take this, that we really don't have to be anxious because we know God's got, got us. You know, and that if, if we walk out today and we're dying in the car because COVID hits us, you know, something that if we have given our heart to God, we're okay. And to share that good news to others is something that really does decrease anxiety. I mean, I know for me, I've been just praying a lot more. So there's another good aspect of this. Not that I wasn't praying before this, but you pray even more and you dive into God's word even more. So there's some positives about that too. That's awesome. Thanks. Any other thoughts? Um, well, like I said, I was super anxious earlier this week and um, having a hard time, and I was talking like to my dad about it, and he just told me that one thing that um, he says, sometimes he says it a thousand times a day, and that's everything is going to be okay because God is watching out for me. And that, like, and I said it probably, I don't know how many times since the beginning of this week, and I think just remembering that over and over, like that he's there for us and we don't have to worry anymore. Like right. it's out of our hands. It's, we don't, you know, not like who cares, but you know, he's got it. So we don't I have think to worry. that anytime we have something high stress coming into our lives, it's just, it's one of those times where it's a test. Where is your faith? You know, are you trusting in God? Are right. you going to cling to him and trust in him? Or are you going to panic? And, yeah. and I choose to trust in God. Right. Whatever it is, whatever right. situations come. So. Yeah. There's uh, Matthew 24 is the chapter that's full of signs of the times and you know, the 
there's going to be real war and rumors of war, and there's going to be all kinds of terrible things that happen, but they are likened to um, a woman who's pregnant and is going into labor, and the contractions uh, is the language that gets used. This idea that as the, can, as the labor grows stronger, the contractions grow greater, and they become closer and closer and closer together. But the beautiful part of that, my mom as an OBGYN can attest to this, that if you're going into labor, that means really soon something amazing is about to happen. Um, and so if this is the end, then that means that Jesus is really close, and that's beautiful. Um, but you can look at tons of times in history where people have said this is the hour and this is the day, and, well, Adventism comes out of a thing called the Great Disappointment. So um, I wouldn't be too quick to label this as which of the seven plagues from Revelation, um, but nor should I, do I think we should shy away from the fact that Jesus is coming, and, and that's beautiful, and um, whether it's tomorrow, or if it's an hour from now, or if it's 50 years from now, um, we should look forward with anticipation to him coming soon, um, and it's not that he's far away even now. Um, we believe that God is near to us um, in these moments as well, and that he does have it all in control. So, you know, um, about 10 days ago, I was in a meeting, um, a couple of you were there, and um, somebody that's maybe listening at home made a comment, um, and, and I'm sure Bonnie will not be offended whatsoever if I share her comment, because it really hit me, and it really meant a lot to me. And we were sitting in, in this meeting, and it was when all this was, it's hard to believe that this has all developed so much more in a week and a half. You know, a week and a half, we thought, well, maybe this might affect us. Wow, has it, okay? And I just remember Bonnie saying, so, what's the worst that can happen? I can die. And, and you look at it, and that's what makes our situation so different, you know? Our job and our responsibility is to stay connected with God during the short version of life so we can enjoy the long version of life. Right. You know, and, and we gotta keep that in perspective. And mm -hmm. if it's, you know, and you guys are absolutely right that we don't know when the end is for us. This may or may not be the end of the world. This may be one of the last of the plague. We don't know, but it really doesn't matter because our job is just to keep that con continual connection with God. So. Thinking about that concept, any additional ideas you guys have on how we can kind of use this crazy uh, time of opportunity to find a way to connect closer with our Lord at this time? Well, like I was saying earlier, um, I've been in prayer even more which is super good for me because that always helps to calm me. Because truly, when I went to the grocery store and saw that there was no toilet paper, I'm, I'm going to be real with you folks, that increased my anxiety. You know, and um, you can ask my husband, I'm sure he, if he's watching, he will attest to the fact that I was like, okay, so I guess we can use Kleenex. So I was like, problem solving. And I was just, and so, I mean, it, it can happen. You're, you're thinking about these common things. And then I was like, okay, I have to get into God's word. So I have highlighted a, a text that for me was just like so awesome to help center me and help me like calm down. Because I, I mean, I'm going to be real with you. When there was no toilet paper, I was like, okay, this is getting real here. So I looked in the Bible and um, Psalms 46 is, is and always has been super important to me. And it says here, God is our refuge and our strength and ever-present help in trouble. That there, and therefore we will not fear though the earth give way or the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. And I was just like, okay, this is a promise. God is our refuge. Mm -hmm. God is who we can trust through all of this and God's going to help us through this and it's like focusing 
and getting back and looking into God's word and looking at promises. And I'm really thankful that my boys um, gave me this women's devotional Bible for Mother's Day a few years back because it's broken up into very specific topics that you can look at. And so to me, I love to read and it gets you focused, you know, in very specific ways. And so that has been helpful for me because like going through this, these are storms that we're going through. There's specific subject on faith during life's storms. So I started looking up these specific devotional topics on faith in God during life's storms. And that was very helpful for me. It was very grounding for me because it got me back into reading God's word, which then calmed me. So those are some strategies that, for me, were helpful. Nice. And, I, and I, I'll tell you, the night that I called Valerie to ask if she would be here to be on this panel discussion for, for our service today, I think I caught her right as she got home. And she's, I think she told me either seven or 12 stores she went through to searching for those little round golden packages in white. Um, and, and so I, I can attest to her anxiety level on that as well. So that, so that's, but I think, I think you succeeded though, didn't you? I did. You I did. did. I did. So. My, I have to give credit where credit is due. My shout out to Andrew Flynn Futcher. Andrew Flynn was the hero of our family, went to Target at 7 a.m. and Andrew got us toilet paper. Bam. Thank you, Andrew. Bam. <laughs> well, I don't know, just to ease the toilet paper issue, Costco says they get it every morning. It's just that people <laughs> come and stock up and take it before 920. So you got to get there before 920. And there's no social distancing there. <laughs> there is. They have barricaded with carts and... Oh, okay. Yeah. Sure. Nice. <laughs> Any other additional strategies that you guys have thought of? And I downloaded a new app that I really liked for anyone that's interested. It's called Refresh, and it has tons of free devotionals and all different categories of different things, and you just kind of type in a keyword of what you're looking for, and it's pretty great, actually. I really have enjoyed it so far, and that's really great for me because it's on my phone. It's I can have it anywhere. So Cool. Refresh. Refresh. Yeah, that was in, it just popped up somewhere. Nice. I, and I really, really like it. And I, a lot of people have the Bible app, I think, too. And that yeah. one has, Same I don't know if people know, it has tons of devotional plans on it. Yeah. Like, And you can share devotions with people. So if you want to connect yeah. with people, you're feeling lonely, just invite them. You can go on that little Bible app and invite them to join a Bible study with you. You guys can be reading the same thing, it's dig awesome. into scripture, and then write comments and read each other's awesome. comments. Awesome. So, yeah, that's, that's so that's a great segue. You're awesome. So part of it was, you know, not only just our personal devotions and our personal connections, but any ideas, and, and that's a great one. I'm really, we're still a church family, you know? Mm -hmm. And all of us may be sitting in different places right now, and, but I just want us all to still feel connected and, and that we have each other's backs and that we're still praying for each other and, any additional ideas you have on maybe how we can connect better with our church family when we all can't be sitting in here this morning? What, what do you think we could, we could have? And I love that one, Bethany. I love that one. Absolutely love that one. I also think in terms of FaceTime, mm -hmm. because I think about how when my son Greg was at Walla Walla University, which he's currently back because Walla Walla University closed, but when he was at Walla Walla University, I could FaceTime him and still have that connection with Greg, even though he was a few hundred miles away. So we could call up our church members mm -hmm. and we could do some FaceTime and we could have FaceTime and share scripture texts as well through um, video, FaceTime, FaceChat, you know, and that kind of still have connections. One, one amazing lady you guys all know, Kathy Westermeyer, she made the suggestion that we need to call the people in our church, reach out to them, just, you know, say hello. So, um, you know, those people you haven't connected with in a while, pick up the phone and, and ask them how they're doing. Because it can be really lonely for people who are 
maybe don't have kids at home or family. So, yeah. And and Kat, you had a great you had an amazing idea, idea earlier. Yeah. Kat's Sarah, idea. Which one? Which, which, which one? There are so many. <laughs> there are so many. Um, so no, true. About, the kids calling the About seniors. encouraging the kids. To oh, call. yeah. So Journey School is out, obviously. And so I thought that what a great idea to take some of our um, elderly or people that don't get out as much and have the kids call them. So if any of you kids are watching, maybe you could get out your church directory and call some people from our church that you haven't talked to in a while that haven't had any social interactions and just check in with each other. And it's a great time. You guys can pray for each other and just make those great connections because it's really great to see that, um, what's the word, that generational gap be reached that, and bridge the gap. Yeah, bridge the gap with generations, and it's really great. It's really fun to see what different generations are doing during this time, and I think it's a really great way to have some good socialization, especially for the kids, too, because I think that they're all kind of going stir-crazy. Yeah, and, and to me what I love about that is is our, you know, and, and it's the same thing. The older generation can also call the kids yeah absolutely and and call everyone else but what i love about your idea was we've really been led by the patriarchs of our church and our older generation that's just led things over and over and i love the idea of the kids taking that torch and really going forward so i i love your kind of appeal to call to to call on them to kind of do this as as the new leaders you yeah. know moving forward they they really are mm -hmm. and and I think that's really a, an awesome call out. So that is your kids' challenge this week, brought to you by your friend Kat. Um, and she will hunt you down if you don't do it. I know, I know a lot of you in Sabbath school. So. She, she, <laughs> she will get you back when we can all get together if you don't. So um, any, any other ideas? I think that... You know, a lot of what's been said here is just finding ways to connect with one another, whether it be through video chat or a simple phone call or reaching out to people that we haven't, well, haven't been in contact with as much. You know, I've been on the phone with a lot of my friends that are far away, um, living in other places. Uh, uh, one of my best friends, he's out in Michigan. Uh, he may or may not have COVID. And so we've been on the phone a lot trying to talk through and, you know, well, how's it going and how's his wife and, how are things going for him? What, what's life doing? And that's been huge. Uh, we've had a couple of moments where we've soundboarded different ideas. Yeah, he's a pastor as well. He's Jonathan. You guys met him a couple weeks ago. Um, and so we soundboard a couple of things. We throw around different ideas about ministry and what the Bible says about different things. Uh, and that's really helped because in, in this time that's so full of fear, um, sometimes the best thing we can do is sit down and have a chat and fix our eyes on something else other than you know, the, the fear that's really getting thrown around. Um, you know, let's look at Jesus and the love that he has for all of us and, and what his word has to say. What's the message that, that we can learn? Because um, there's certainly a lot of them and God's never absent even when there's fear. So some of what we've talked about so far is how it's affected us personally, how we deal with our internal things, how we connect with God, and now how to communicate with others. But God really called us to do something else, too. You know, and God's last words when he was here was to tell others about him and, you know, seek and save the lost. So how can we use this as an opportunity to share his love and to provide hope for a lot of people that don't have them in their lives and, and maybe don't feel hope. And yet, you know, we've got this, well, we can't, we got a shelter. We have to keep some social distancing. How, how do we still witness and, and share with others? Any ideas along that line right now? You know, I would say that... Um I'm going to recant what I said earlier about Facebook because <laughs> actually I posted something today for the school. But, um, and one of the things that I think we can do to connect with each other and share God's love, share his good message, 
is letting other people know. I had um, a parent text me a picture of what her daughter wrote in their devotional for this morning. Mm. And, um, and it was just her gratitude for her teachers and for the school in general. And oh my goodness, that just filled our hearts with incredible joy and we felt so blessed by her. And so what did I do? I posted on Facebook. So I think that, you know, letting people know that you care about them, letting people know that you're grateful for them and um, getting creative with that and possibly just posting it on Facebook, start sharing all those really good, positive things. Yeah. You know, I thought of something earlier today, so I also want to throw a, a um, and I haven't told them either one of this because I just thought about it today, but I want to kind of throw out a, a challenge maybe to all of us, but I'm kind of throwing it out to um, the Rick and Nick team. Um, Rick, and Rick and Nick, um, <laughs> Nick and Rick. Um, um, you know, I think it might be really powerful right now to help us all stay connected and then maybe some things that we can even share with others is, is to maybe give us a little daily devotion. You know, a little, it doesn't have to be long, just a little short little thing that's, that's really just, you know, Rick passed out a, uh, an email today, and if you're not on the church email list, you should probably get on it, Kat. Um, since I discovered she wasn't on it, you know, he passed out a, that had some really cool verses. And one of the things I was able to do this week was, one is, I'm still treating some patients, and a lot of them are pretty in quite a bit of despair, so I was able to share with a lot of them. And it's at times like this that they're the most open to listen, you know. Um, it's pretty awesome because when I was sending out some messages to all the staff on kind of what to do and how we're handling, you know, I, I've been able to use, I was, I was going to include a verse on the bottom of it, and it was nice because I just got an email from Rick with all these positive verses of hope in God, and so I went over there and went down my short list of his and took one of those and copied and pasted onto mine, and it, and it was just great. I, I think we can really find ways to connect with others or, or maybe connect with that relative that you know has been kind of there on the edge that maybe is now feeling at a time like this maybe they're they're more willing to listen to where they they have it you know so I don't know any other ideas on along that line well, that's a huge thing like in, in this time that is so full of unknown um, you know being there to answer questions the best we can you know Sometimes we're afraid that we're going to say the wrong thing, that we're going to be like Job's friends and kind of lay on the judgment um, to someone that's in crisis. But I don't know, Valerie, you might also be able to speak to this, but sometimes simply being there and, and, saying, and saying an encouraging word and just having an open mind is the best thing we can do um, as opposed to kind of shirking away out of fear that we're going to say the wrong thing. And that goes for us as well. You know, sometimes we have questions that we wonder, why is God letting COVID happen? Why is COVID-19 striking at you know, what seems to be a really bad time for pretty much everybody? Um, you know, Easter's right around the corner. This is supposed to be a time when we celebrate God, not question him. Um, and yet here we are. But that's okay because we see over and over throughout the Bible some of the most faithful are the ones with the biggest questions. One of the 12, we call him Doubting Thomas for a reason. It's because he has all the questions. Um, he says he won't believe until he sticks his hands in, in Jesus' palms, in, in the wound. Um, that's the kind of proof he needs. And Jesus says, that's okay. That's okay. You can still come to me with your questions. I will still be there. I'm not going to run away right. because you decided to wonder. Absolutely. And to add on to that, I, I, for me, I reached out to one of our neighbors who she's 90 or 91. If you're watching, Betty, I hope you're okay that I just said your age. Anyway, so I reached out to her because I was concerned that she might need something. So I called on the phone and I was like, hi, Betty, it's Valerie. And She's like, Valerie? And I'm like, yeah, you know, your neighbor just up the street. And she's like, oh, David's wife. Okay, yeah, yeah. And I was asking her, I was like, do you need anything? You know, do you need some food? Do you need me to bring you 
yes, after I got toilet paper. Do you need me to bring you some toilet paper? You know, and she laughed. She goes, you're funny. She goes, no, my son got that for me. And I said, well, I'm glad that your son got that for you, Betty, but I wanted you to know that as a neighbor, if you needed that, I would help you. Because she's just this sweet, spunky, feisty lady. And I just wanted her to know, you know, that connection with our neighbors. You know, we're talking about reaching out to people. And to me, it's like really asking her, did she need food or not? Because, you know, Christ talks to us about reaching people where their needs are, mm-hmm. you know? I, did I say a specific scripture text to her over the phone that day? No. Mm-hmm. But I asked her if she needed some food or if she needed some toilet paper, you know, and just letting her know that if she needed that, that I would help her with that. Um, and I feel like that that's sometimes what we need to do, too. We don't necessarily have to be having, like you said, all the answers because, trust me, I definitely don't have all the answers. And, um, but I don't think that we have to have all the answers. Most of the clients that come to my office, I'm present for them. Mm. I listen to them. I and frequently ask them, so are you coming to me today because you want me to give you suggestions for how to solve this problem? Or are you coming today because you just want me to listen to you and be an encourager and support you? And, 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 let, and ask them, you know, I just needed you to listen. I really just needed to vent. I just really needed to know that somebody cared. And so frequently that's what we need to be for each other, our neighbors. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's just listening to them and being there and being present for them. I like that because I read something earlier that said to remember that this is just a building that we're in right now. Like, we're the church. And we need to, I think that that's hard. Sometimes I don't think about it that way. I'm like, Saturday, i got to go to church. But we're the church now, especially now. And so I think that remembering that we're the ones that really need to be showing that. And if people need something, like anyone in the church directory, if you call anyone, if they don't know how to reach you, like you said, like know what to do, they're going to call someone who does. And somebody will help. And we're all kind of here to help each other. And I really like that you said that. That's really great. Yeah, and I, and I think that's a big part of it. I mean, we kind of gathered as this group to have somewhat of, you know, a broad spectrum of opinions. Um, but some of, you know, to me what we're really missing here, and, and it's the group that I'm most concerned about, and what we're really missing here is our most senior individuals, okay? And we didn't invite one of our most senior individuals here because, frankly, we wanted you to be safe, okay? But we just want you to know that we love you guys and we care about you guys. And we just want to make sure that your needs are being met. Um, If there's anything that anybody needs physically, spiritually, um, you know, mentally, you, you, know, you know, anything that socially that we can help with. Social distancing does not mean social um, lack of socialness. Okay, we can be social in many other ways, and it, that I just want anyone that's watching this to feel free to to kind of reach out if there's something that you're that you're feeling and you need, and and it can be through the churches. You know, Facebook page, it can be, um, you know, the church office is continuing to collect messages. Leave a message, you know, at the church phone, or especially if you have anybody's number, just contact somebody and we'll get get some things figured out. So we just want to thank you for joining us and putting up with us on your uh, Sabbath morning, and we really want you to kind of enjoy the rest of your worship service. Happy Sabbath.